So, Ali Dawa took some time away from his anime porn research to beg the apostate prophet to make fun of the Bible. AP shared the message on Twitter. Ali Dawa asked, What do you think about this verse? And the verse is, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the foundations of the waters. The verse is Revelation 8.10. If you're not familiar with the book of Revelation, it's mainly a series of visions given to John. The visions are filled with images that represent things that will happen. So, John sees a scroll with seven seals that only Jesus can open. There's a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. There are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There are earthquakes, a seven-headed dragon, a seven-headed beast that comes out of the ocean, and so on. Now, why in the name of common sense would Ali Dawa ask AP about this verse from the book of Revelation? Well, follow the reasoning here, because it's pretty hilarious. One of the main, and yet dumbest, arguments for Islam is the argument from miraculous scientific accuracy. How could the Quran contain so many amazing scientific insights, insights that are only being confirmed today? Well, it doesn't. The Quran is a scientific disaster. So, when people like AP respond to the argument from miraculous scientific accuracy, they point out that, According to the Quran, the sun sets in a muddy pool, and stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons who try to sneak into paradise in order to eavesdrop on his plans. AP points out that it's just stupid to make scientific accuracy your criterion when your book says that the sun is small enough to set in a muddy pool way out west, and that shooting stars are actual stars that Allah has hurled at demons. Ali Dawa and AP are scheduled to have a debate in May. I think it's going to be something like Islam versus atheism. But Ali Dawa knows that AP has not only atheist fans, but also Christian fans, Jewish fans, Hindu fans, and all kinds of other fans, because AP tends to get along pretty well with people who aren't threatening to publicly execute him, people who don't call for the violent subjugation of the world, people who don't promote wife beating and sex with little girls. So AP has common ground with a lot of people. Ali Dawa doesn't like that, so he's been saying on Twitter that he's going to spend time during their debate attacking Christianity and trying to force AP to say that Christianity is stupid. For instance, Ali Dawa declares, I dare the waste man apostate prophet to call Christianity a stupid religion as he does with Islam. He will never ever criticize Christianity because he knows what will happen. But in May, face to face, I'm going to make him admit it. Can't wait. What did I say, guys? He will never answer this. But in May, when I stick a camera in his face and corner him, he will have no choice but to admit Christianity, according to his standards, is also stupid. He's scared Christians will stop funding him. Lol. And we're proud of that. So, Ali Dawa is admitting that during his debate about Islam and atheism, he's deliberately going to go completely off topic and start talking about Christianity. He's months away from the debate, and he's already put together this plan. Now, if I were to post on Twitter, Hey everyone, I'm having a debate with an atheist in May. The topic is Christianity versus atheism. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to focus on attacking Islam. What would every Muslim on Twitter say? They would say, you see, David doesn't actually care about Christianity or atheism. He only cares about attacking Islam. But when Ali Dawa announces on Twitter that he's going to be talking about Christianity in his debate about Islam and atheism, what do Muslims on Twitter say? Alhamdulillah, brilliant plan, brother! So, is Ali Dawa's goal to show that Muhammad is a true prophet? Of course not. If it was, he'd want to use his time to show that Muhammad was a true prophet. Is his goal to show that atheism is false? Of course not. If he wanted to do that, he'd want to use his time to show that atheism is false. His goal in this debate about Islam and atheism is to attack Christianity, and in order to justify going off topic, he says that he's going to use this debate to cause division between AP and his Christian fans.
Welcome to the brilliant intellects of Islam's top apologists. These are the plans they come up with, and they can't figure out why Islam is collapsing. Research has shown that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. It is going to become an avalanche. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. A tsunami. Your, your child is going to become an apostate. Now, let's be generous and help out our friend Ali Dawa. I mean that. You're going to see that I mean that. I'm so confident that this plan is doomed from the start. I'll gladly help him out here. So, what's wrong with Ali Dawa's plan? I'll mention three problems. First, he thinks that AP has Christian fans because AP doesn't call Christianity stupid. Wrong. The reason lots of Christians like AP is not that he doesn't call Christianity stupid. Christians like AP because he's not an annoying, condescending, angry jerk. There are atheists who are annoying, condescending, angry jerks. I see lots of them in the comments section. They usually don't get along with anyone except other atheists who think and act like they do. They usually don't get along with AP. But there are other atheists who, even though they believe that Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism are a bunch of nonsense, they don't really care much what other people believe. They're not obsessed with making everyone agree with them, so they don't feel the need to go around attacking everyone. But David, if they don't care about what other people believe, why do some of them attack Islam? Well, some of them do have a problem with a religion that calls for the violent subjugation of the entire world, a religion that demands that apostates and critics be executed, a religion that promotes wife-beating and taking women and girls as sex slaves and marrying prepubescent little girls. So, they speak out against that sort of religion. But guess what? Most of us agree on those issues, so we can all get along as we condemn the most obvious false prophet in history. Atheists and Christians and Hindus and Jews and Buddhists can all declare, whatever else we may disagree on, Whatever we may think about each other's views, we can all agree that we don't want to be controlled by people like Ali Dawa. So, what will happen if AP says that something in the Bible is stupid? Oh, it will save Islam! It will stop the avalanche of apostasy! And we're proud of that! And we're proud of that! No, no one will care. AP is an atheist. We expect him to think that lots of things in various religions are stupid. And let me say to AP, AP, if you'd like to dash Ali Dawa's new plan for saving Islam to pieces, go ahead and say that you find something in the Bible stupid. Muslims of the world, watch how little we care. Because unlike your Dawagandists, we're not obsessed with controlling what people say. Second, Ali Dawa is convinced that if he can just cause division between AP and his fans, then AP's fans won't support him, and he'll have no reason to criticize Islam. The Dawagandists really seem to be convinced that the only reason people criticize Muhammad is that they make money from it, not realizing that if AP really wanted to get rich, all he'd have to do is come back to Islam and say that the evidence was so powerful it forced him to come back to Islam. Muslims would parade him around the world as their poster boy for the next 50 years. Muslim organizations and Gulf states would shower him with money. So, why doesn't AP do that? Well, it's because his real reason for criticizing Muhammad has a lot more to do with terrorist attacks and murdering critics and murdering apostates and beating women and raping little girls than with making money. So, this is just a poor understanding of psychology on the part of Ali Dawa and his co-religionists. They just don't understand what motivates people. If you go back a little earlier, before the apostate prophet, those of us who started publicly criticizing Muhammad and the Quran back in 2005, 2007, we thought we were signing our death warrants. This was when cartoonists had to go into hiding because they knew they'd be killed. This is when critics like Theo Van Gogh were murdered in the streets. Nabil and I actually sat down and said, we're probably going to be dead in 10 years. So, how are we going to make the most of the little time we've got. Times are different now, 
I think most people like me probably aren't going to be killed. There are too many of us now, and Islam is collapsing too rapidly. But the personalities are the same, and Dawagandists never understand the personality type they're dealing with. They're dealing with people who are willing to lay down their lives to protect the world from the violent and perverted teachings of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. So when you say, Oh, if we can just get people to stop supporting the apostate prophet, he'll stop attacking Prophet Muhammad, and our religion will be saved! You sound like an idiot. If you know anything about personality types, you know how stupid that is. I'm pretty sure that AP could be homeless and penniless, and he'd still be coming after Muhammad. So this is another reason the Dawa boys just can't figure out why their religion is imploding. They constantly mislabel people's motivations, so they never understand what to do about people criticizing their fake prophet. Third, did Ali Dawa have to use the stupidest argument in the history of humanity to try to get AP to attack the Bible? I'm going to help him out on this one. Look at this passage. Again, this is from the book of Revelation. In the Bible, in dreams and visions, people are given various images and symbols that represent other things. Ali Dawa doesn't even know what genre he's reading. He's thinking to himself, Oh, AP attacks the Quran for saying that the sun sets in the muddy pool, yeah? And that stars are missiles, yeah? So let me show him that the Bible says that a star fell on the rivers. That's the same thing, yeah? No, the Bible is not saying that an actual star fell on some rivers the way the Quran says that an actual sun sets in a muddy pool or the way that Allah throws actual stars at demons. This is a vision. John sees a vision of a star falling on some rivers and he's supposed to interpret what that means. Since I have no doubt that Ali Dawa didn't understand what I just said, too complicated, let me make it even easier for him. In the book of Genesis, Joseph, the son of Jacob, gets some dreams, but they're actually revelations. Let's read a passage. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Notice, even though Muhammad plagiarized this story for Surah 12 of the Quran, and even though the meaning and interpretation are clear, Ali Dawa would look at this and say, Oh my goodness! The Bible says that the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowed down to a man, yeah? This must mean that the sun and moon and stars are small, like in the Quran, small enough to set in a pool, small enough to be thrown at a demon. This is what I'll say to apostate prophet in our debate. Fortunately, no one who listened to Joseph was stupid enough to think that he was saying that the actual sun and moon and stars had come to him and bowed down to him. The Dawa boys and their fans are the only people stupid enough to interpret a dream or a vision that way. So let me help Ali Dawa here. Ali Dawa, if you want to use this approach with AP, you don't need to embarrass yourself by telling your gullible fans that dreams and visions should be taken as literal descriptions of physical events. I know your followers are dumb enough to fall for that, but if you're trying to reach anyone else with your dawah, there's an easier way here. All you have to do is say, apostate prophet, you don't believe in God. So isn't it stupid to believe that a virgin gave birth? Isn't it stupid to believe that a man walked on water? Isn't it stupid to believe that a man raised people from the dead? Isn't it stupid to believe in miracles and prophets and revelations? Isn't all of that stupid? Just say that in your debate about Islam and atheism. And if he agrees with you, you can say, Alhamdulillah, a religion is saved. AP called Christianity stupid. Now his career is over. The avalanche of apostasy has stopped. And see how well that works out for you. Then come up with your new plan. 
As for AP, there's a simple response when Ali Dawa demands that you attack the Bible. The simple response is, yes, as an atheist, I think that a lot of things you're bringing up from the Bible are stupid. But our debate is about Islam, and since your prophet affirmed the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Jewish and Christian scriptures, anything that sounds stupid in the Bible will also make your God and your prophet sound stupid for affirming it. So, in addition to all of the other reasons I've given for rejecting your prophet, we now have more. Thank you, Mr. Dawa. This is a part of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?